Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. A little while back, I did a short video on a blade sharpening jig I made, so I'd never have to send my blades off ever again to get them sharpened for $20 a piece. In that video, I showed the jig, but I didn't show how I made it. Also, the video was a fail because the surface I used for sharpening the carbide was not designed for sharpening. I used a rigid 7 inch continuous rim diamond blade. This was a bad choice. The blade is designed for cutting, not sharpening. It worked on really cheap blades, I guess because the carbide was soft. But it chewed up my Freud Industrial Glue Line Rip Blade, and that was a $70 mistake. But a guy that watched this earlier video made a comment that ended up saving the day. So now I'm going to show you how I made the jig and show you what I used to make the jig work like a champ. The jig is shaped like a wedge, so I'm going to need a bottom and a top. I cut both of those to around 10 inches by 13 inches. For the sides, I'm going to need two triangles. The angle I'm going for is around 40 degrees, and I'll explain the need for the angle a little later. Next, I'll need to cut a slot that will allow me to adjust the angle of the blade that is to be sharpened. It's important to have some adjustability because blades have different rake or hook angles. The hook angle can vary from up to 20 degrees for an aggressive rip blade to a negative 5 degrees for a blade used on a miter saw or radial arm saw. You don't want to inadvertently change the hook angle of your blade. If you do, it won't do what it's designed to do as good as it can. Changing the hook angle will also take away a lot of the carbide and you won't get very many sharpenings that way. So that's why I have to cut a slot. How I did it was to basically make a circle cutting jig for my trim router and make it the length that will be the same as the adjustment arm on the jig. Since a 5 8 bolt is used in the slot to hold the blade, I use a 5 8 router bit for the slot, which I cut in multiple passes. Then I use a 3 quarter inch router bit for the underside of the slot to cut a shallow channel for the head of the bolt I'll use to hold the blade I'm sharpening. This whole process would have been easier if I could have found a 5 8 inch carriage bolt, but I couldn't, and I didn't want to order one bolt. I also needed a 7 8 inch router bit to do this channel correctly, but I didn't want to order one or drive the 75 mile round trip to the place I knew that had one. Instead, I used a regular 5 8 inch bolt and ground two sides of the head with an angle grinder. After a couple of test fits, I got the bolt nice and snug in the slot. I also didn't have a washer to fit the 5 8 inch bolt, so I made a couple out of fender washers using a step bit. Once that's done, I'll cut out an adjustment arm, making sure for the time being it's longer than the 10 inches of the jig's length. I'll do a little shaping to make it a little nicer to look at, but this really isn't important. Then I need to carefully mark where I need to drill my holes in the adjustment arm. One end gets a 5 8 inch hole, the other end gets a smaller hole for a pivot screw. Just so you'll know, I messed this one up and had to make another one, but what I did wrong was drill the big 5 8 inch hole in one shot, and the bit wasn't centered very well. To make the jig as consistent as possible, I'm going to cut a shallow dado on one side for a runner. I use thick CA glue to set the runner in place. Glue and pin nails are used to attach the angled sides, but when I attach the top, I only use the pin nails. That way I can take it apart if I messed up a measurement. Loading the blade onto the jig is easy. One thing you must do is space the blade off of the adjustment arm so that it spins without teeth digging into the arm. I do this with one of the washers I made. Then I adjust the arm so that the carbide tooth surface is parallel to the lap wheel. 
That way you won't change the hook angle of the tooth. I marked one tooth with a sharpie and began to work my way around the blade. Here's why I came up with the 40 degree angle. Every circular saw blade has a gullet between the teeth. In most cases, if you come at the lap wheel parallel to the surface of your table saw, the wheel will hit the bottom of the gullet before the entire carbide tooth. By approaching the wheel from a steeper angle, the whole tooth is exposed before the wheel reaches the gullet. Of course, the larger the diameter of the wheel, the less angle is necessary. As far as the disc itself, a wonderful person left me a useful comment for a possible source for discs that would do what I needed them to do. Although I didn't use the same one he suggested, he did put me on the right track, and I was able to find what I needed. I'll leave a link below for the exact wheel I used. These discs are really thin, and I was concerned with stability. So for that reason, and cost, I stayed with a 6-inch wheel. I use stabilizers on each side of the wheel for added rigidity. As I'm sharpening each tooth, I use very little pressure. Not only do I want to save as much carbide as possible, but I don't want to cause the lap wheel to deflect. Now I know that comments are going to start rolling in about how I'm ruining the blade by sharpening them in such an imprecise way. Well, everyone has their own opinion. I know that good blades are ground to the thousandth of an inch at the factory, and I also know that the same folks can sharpen a blade to the same tolerances. But I just don't think it's necessary, and I've probably heard all of the arguments. I'm not making jet engine parts. I'm cutting wood, a material that begins moving the second you cut it. Every time you make a cut in a piece of wood, you release internal stresses in that wood. So if you're going to measure things in thousandths of an inch, you never made the cut you thought you did. Thousands of woodworkers hand sharpen plane blades, turning tools, chisels, even drill bits. Good results happen all of the time. Paul Sellers hand sharpens dovetail saws and even sets the teeth himself. If you've ever seen his dovetails, I think they're precise enough. I said all that to say this. I really appreciate comments, but you're going to have to show me some proof that I can't continue to do good woodworking by sharpening my own blades. But let's see how this blade turned out. I'm going to make a cut in an off cut of laminated cherry and maple, two woods that are known to burn very easily. But not only does the blade go through the workpiece like butter, there's no burning. Not satisfied? Well, let's try some two inch thick maple. Well, look at that. Close enough for woodworking. Good enough for me. I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. And comments really can be helpful. One thoughtful comment from an especially kind viewer saved this project. So keep that in mind as you comment on this video or any other video you might watch. Thanks for watching. And there you go.